Hello everybody, I'm Namita Thapar, Executive Director of MQ Pharmaceuticals and today we're going to be talking about weight loss surgery, specifically bariatric surgery. 30% of Indians are obese and so this becomes a very relevant topic for all of us today. We have an expert, Dr. Manish Motwani. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. And we have our two lovely ladies. We have Bela and Hi. we have Seema. Yeah. We will be coming to your story shortly. First, let's yeah. understand the basics from doctor. Um, so doctor, let's start from the very beginning. Who is the prime candidate for this surgery? Who should be thinking about this? So obesity, as we all know, is a medical problem and every medical problem needs a scientific solution. Scientific solution is based on the severity of medical problem and severity is gauged on the basis of BMI that is body mass index. As per body mass index anyone who is less than 30 BMI does not warrant a surgery but anyone who is more than 30 BMI truly speaking Namita doesn't have any other option apart from bariatric surgery. But to put it in layman's term, uh, calculate your height in centimeters and uh, deduct 100 from that that becomes your ideal body weight. Okay. If you are more than 18 to 20 kgs above your normal weight, you are a candidate for bariatric surgery. What exactly is done in this surgery? So surgery is done laparoscopically with the help of few small holes, no big incisions, no big cuts. You know, I have been in bariatric surgery since the time we used to do open surgeries. Right. And you know, open surgeries with a 4 to 6 to 8 inch of fat, right. it used to be not just a, a task for the patients, but a huge task for us too. But now it's become a laparoscopic surgery with the help of 4 or 5 small holes, uh, sometimes a single hole in the umbilicus and that's it, the people who don't want those small scars also. And then we go inside with the help of a telescope, we see the organs of concern, some surgeries are performed only on the stomach, which are restrictive surgeries. Some are performed on stomach and intestines. So the purpose is one, to decrease the intake that comes in. And if the patient has more complex obesity with multiple medical problems, sometimes the second part of the surgery becomes to create malabsorption. So everything that you eat doesn't get digested. Right. So uh, primarily we bring down a patient right from a 80 kg patient to who comes down to around 50 okay. to the highest that we would have operated would be around a 400 kg patient. Oh my god, that is a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, I was just watching a few podcasts before meeting you just to get myself educated and a lot of uh, patients right after surgery talk about things like, oh you know, they pump uh, a lot of gas during the surgery and it travels all up and you get this pain all over your body, uh, you get bowel um, issues and you feel very nauseous. Um, are these, uh, are there some massive side effects right after surgery? One of the most important aspects of bariatric surgery, as much as surgery, yeah. is good counselling. So we take it upon ourselves that we want to guide the patients right through their journey before surgery to even years and years and years after surgery. So uh, if the patient is made aware that after surgery you, we have put in gas, yes of course we put in gas, but it is not in, within the stomach or intestine. It is outside the stomach between the layers of the skin and intestine. But we remove the entire gas out. So all these are myths that it's yes, going to uh, cause yes, all these yeah. aches and pains and make you nauseous for a long time. Absolutely. And uh, the second part is uh, the surgery is such that if I operate a patient in the morning, by evening the patient is taking 30-40 rounds in the hospital, next day the patient goes up and down the stairs. One ego issue that we have is our patient should not be dependent on anyone. And this is how bariatric surgery is that by the time they leave hospital, they are work fit. The second aspect is about nauseous, vomiting and all those aspects which you said, which are a thing of the past. It is not just because of some medications that have come up. If you are aware that you are supposed to have multiple small bites, multiple small meals, have sip by sip, don't overeat. Earlier the food or liquids were going from a tube into a big bag. Correct. Now it is going from a tube into a tube. Correct. If you are aware of this and you are made aware of this, I don't see any reason why you should have even 1% issue. Got it. And then, you know, a lot of people say that in terms of uh, maybe a long term, you know, 3, 4, 5 years down, they miss their donut and their brownies and they are not able to eat the food they could eat before. Is that a fact or a myth? 
So we don't say don't do this, don't do that. So can they eat a brownie and a donut? Absolutely, but anything and everything in moderation is always okay. So okay. it's not like you have to give up stuff that you like. Yeah. You just have to curtail your quantity. Absolutely. And we are things like all I can have is like one little bowl of food because my stomach cannot take more quantity. That's also a myth, right? No. It's not about myth. You basically lose your appetite, right? No, you don't lose your appetite. You become normal. Okay. You are made to understand that multiple small meals are good. Okay. Small bites are good. Chewing well is very good. And once you understand that, probably you end up in the end of the day eating more than what you would have otherwise eaten. But in small quantities, in a responsible manner. Right. And like you said, sip slow, chew more. Absolutely. Those are anyway good things for everybody. Everyone, not just for Biratic Absolutely. patients. Absolutely. But you know, one big topic of conversation is they say that uh, unmarried people, younger people, when they go through this, it has implications on their fertility, their ability to get pregnant. Is that true? Absolutely, it's true. Oh, it is. I'll, I'll give you a small example mm -hmm. or a small fact. If one partner is obese, there are 50% chances of being infertile. If both partners are obese, there are almost 75% chances of being infertile. Okay. So, uh, it is always advised that when a person is going to get married, first lose weight and then get married. Because if the girl or boy becomes normal weight, Definitely the partner is also going to be a normal weight person with whom they'll marry. Right. Bariatric surgery does impact fertility a lot, but in a positive sense. Oh, in a positive way. So it helps. Absolutely. It's not like it has an adverse impact on Amazing body. impact. Positive impact. We would have minimum 650 couples. 650 couples who are infertile, who have uh, tried at least a few cycles of IUI, a few cycles of IVF, yet unsuccessful. Gynecologist says that everything is normal, but still fertility doesn't happen. 480 out of them have conceived normally after bariatric oh, surgery. Wonderful. So it is supposedly one of the treatments for uh, infertility. And so, yes, it impacts fertility a lot, but in a positive manner. But doctor, a lot of times, like, you know, when you follow something like Ayurveda or naturopathy, the thinking is that why take a shortcut? Because they look at surgery as a shortcut. Aap lifestyle change karo and lose that weight over a year or year and a half. Obesity is a medical problem. Mm -hmm. Every medical problem requires a scientific solution. Scientific solution is based on severity of the medical problem. Severity is gauged on the basis of BMI. As per the BMI, anyone less than 25 BMI is normal weight, 25 to 30 overweight, 30 to 35 grade 1 obesity, 35 to 40 grade 2 and more than 40 is grade 3 obesity. Okay. Every stage of obesity is a different medical problem and every stage of obesity has got a different treatment. When a person is less than 25 BMI diet, 25 to 30 BMI diet plus extras like gym, yoga, exercise, you lipo, liposuction, tummy tucks, injections, medicines, Herbalife, keto diets, balloons, oh etc. But right. once a patient goes more than 30 BMI, respect your body, respect the disease. Only if the right treatment is done to the right patient at the right time, you get the right results. Beyond 30 BMI, you will not get response beyond without bariatric surgery and this has to be accepted. Otherwise, patients will come up with complications. You keep telling us, okay, if someone is doing Ayurveda, what is the complication that is going to come in? Obesity is mother of all diseases. 68% of diabetics are obese, 70% of high blood pressure patients are obese, 72% of heart disease patients are obese, 85% of sleep apnea patients are obese, 65% of infertility patients are obese. If you allow obesity to remain in the body, these problems keep coming in. Right. So treat the problem when it's a problem. Don't allow it to become a complication because doctors cannot give you as good results in a complicated stage as they can give Absolutely. you in a problematic stage. I mean, those statistics are crazy. So Absolutely. I see the medical need for it. Yes. Now the mother of all questions, right? Yeah. The latest uh, fad is Ozempic. The yeah. weight loss uh, magic pills. Yes. Um, why would one do bariatric versus take Ozempic? I just said that 25 to 29.9 BMI is where you do diet plus extras, where comes the role of medicines. Okay. If you are 7 to 10 or 12 kgs overweight mm -hmm. and you do diet plus medicines, you will lose that 7 to 10 or 12 kgs and you will be able to maintain the lost weight also. But even if you are just 15 kgs overweight, then diet and extras is not the line of treatment. If for once you put in all your efforts and reduce that 15 kgs, you have lost 15 kgs, you will gain back 18 kgs. Because of 15 kgs, diet and extras is not the prescribed line of treatment. 
obesity is a medical problem everything should be treated scientifically people who deserve or are in the category where this is going to help that is 25 to 29.9 bmi 7 to 10 kg is overweight right it does a world of good for them by losing that weight gaining back their confidence but it does still a bigger world of good to those who are not ideal candidates for ozempic in making them aware that they require weight loss absolutely i think i think that's a great way to put it in terms absolutely. of who needs it and then at some point that's not the right line of treatment sure. you have to go in for bariatric Absolutely. and in fact now let's move on to our two lovely ladies so let's start with you bella um, yeah. what was it like and how long has it been since you've had your surgery i had surgery before 12 years okay 12 years back yeah 12 years back you look absolutely fantastic both of you <laughs> thank you uh, i was 110 kg wow uh, at the age of 35 i went through the surgery uh, I went for uh, to doctor for liposuction. Okay, I want to do lipo. So he suggested me the surgery, and uh, I went through that. And after that, I gained my confidence uh, to talk to people. Do you feel like your life has changed, and you miss certain food, or no. are not living to your fullest because of food restrictions? That is that is all mind game. Okay, is my stomach full? That I have to think, or is are i can't have anything right so i always went through that my stomach is full so i don't want to have again and i don't want to have more because right. i am full okay namita uh, uh, bela has been one of the uh, like any other patient of ours where uh, she has uh, been responsible for bringing life to the life of not less than 300 patients wow we have support group meetings that we organize on a regular basis where we have a mix of old patients who have got operated and new patients to be operated where they interchange ideas mm -hmm. and she has been a source of inspiration to hundreds and hundreds of people absolutely you know one of the things again i want to ask bela and seema is we hear a lot about loose skin clumps of hair coming out again fact or myth we have to shift from our focus of quantity food to quality food right. quality food is high protein if a person takes the right type of proteins that is the good concentration of proteins regularly we don't see these issues coming up but yes between the 3rd to 5th month of the surgery there's a phase in the patient's life mm -hmm. where you find some amount of excess hair loss compared to earlier but this is a self limiting procedure you get all your hair back plus possibly a better quality of hair the second part was the loose skin so loose skin please uh, let's not blame everything to surgery <laughs> surgery is for weight loss loose skin depends on your quality of skin okay but as uh, we have said that we do no, a lot of counseling because your skin has been stretched for so long and now you're shrinking it so isn't it automatically going to become loose but 20 to 35 and 40 years you still have a very good quality of skin okay so it's age related more than but surgery but we've had related. patients who are 50s and 60s Uh, who have been we don't just uh, counsel about diet it is counseling about post surgery protocols about exercises toning exercises massages and if you go into doing everything that we tell you to do in the first 6 to 8 or 10 months 92 to 94% of patients will not have a loose skin or will not have a significant loose skin no that's fantastic seema let's hear your story yeah my story i started putting on weight in 16 and 17 after okay. the diagnosis of hypothyroidism oh, okay and during the covid it becomes worse i was so frustrated by putting weight over and over and over and any health issues or it was more for no, comfort and I, feeling good and confidence my obesity works on uh, just affects my knees oh knees okay i won't be able to walk 100 meters or 50 meters god and because of that i had high bp mental frustrations and the sugar levels up everything rose up and how long back did you do this uh one and a half years back and you've been comfortable yeah. in terms of lifestyle yeah. and every last month i went to vegas and in a single day i walked 27000 steps oh my god and this is someone <laughs> who had knee issues before yeah. no, may no. i ask your age please my age is 56 so you did it at around 54 yeah. now that's a great question i wanted to ask you there a lot of times we hear that you know maybe older women who have a lot of comorbidities they may have asthma and diabetes and you know cardio issues are there certain candidates who even if they are obese they should not be doing bariatric surgery maybe because they are too old or maybe they have too many comorbidities or both 
Uh, Namita, we operate right from a patient who should be nine year old, who's nine year old to a seventy seven year old. Oh, that's the oldest patient you yeah, operated. That's the one I have operated. Okay. But I'll tell you, uh, uh, Seema just spoke about the problems that she had about knees. Now, because of knees, she was anyways walking less. Right. But one of the most important complications is breathlessness. You become breathless on walking ten steps, twenty steps. not even 100 meters you walk and you start feeling breathless right. because the load on the heart and the lungs is almost double you know suppose a patient is has to be 60 and is 100 kgs the heart is almost pumping blood to 1 and 1/2 sema the lungs are almost pumping oxygen to 1 and 1/2 sema that means at rest like the way we are speaking right now the heart and lungs are working to two times its potential so whenever a challenging situation comes like walking fast walking more climbing stairs the heart and lungs say sorry we can't do it similar things goes with diabetes blood pressures and snoring you know snoring is a major yeah, complication yeah. so uh, remember one thing is very important that the medical problems will not be a hindrance we don't operate the patient like seema has come today i wouldn't operate her tomorrow we optimize the patient make them fit for surgery or the reduce the risk factors of surgery and anesthesia and then operate because we know that these people don't have any other operation uh, any other treatment apart from bariatric surgery which can really give them a different life altogether right but is comorbidities like someone having hypertension diabetes heart disease heart disease can they go through the surgery so uh, Bariatric surgery is a treatment for diabetes. Okay. We operate surgery, we operate in patients who are uncontrolled diabetics. Heart disease. I was. I remember a patient uh, who was having around twenty percent heart functioning. He had a cardiac failure, and he was around one one thirty one forty kgs. Yeah. Around one thirty one forty kgs. So they keep meeting these patients in support in group meetings. In the support groups. Yeah. 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 So he was around one thirty one forty kgs. and i told him that uh, sorry uh, in past 20 years and more than 13000 patients we have 100% results i can't take a negative results just because i want to operate a 20% heart functioning patient mm-hmm. so he was after me he was after me suddenly that patient one day comes to my consulting that doc i want to write something for you he sits on the table in front of me on the chair and he writes i am giving you death on table consent i understood he has gone to at least 10 doctors where he has been told that they will have to sign such right, things and then get right. operated that person who could not walk 100 meters without being breathless heart functioning of around 8, 17 to 20% after bariatric surgery now he runs for 7 kilometers a day wow. and has a heart functioning of 55% fantastic you know this brings us to the end of a fabulous episode i must say that obesity is one topic like doc rightly said there are a lot more myths and these fake podcasts floating around than the facts so it's very important that a doctor like him these lovely ladies who been through it educate us on the facts on the numbers and let's get rid of these myths let's get educated this is not a fad this is a medical treatment for people where obesity is a medical condition and let's look at it with that perspective thank you very much khana hai banke udna hai bhi